Good morning to all of you. We thank you for being here with us, and we welcome especially all visitors, whether here in the sanctuary or online. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. For Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, who are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Exodus. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said, to Mo said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained, but the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. 
Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say the psalm together. Hallelujah. When, when Israel, Israel came, came out, out of Egypt, Egypt the, house the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech, Judah became God's sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, Jordan, that you, that you turn back. back. You, you mountains, that you skip like rams. You, you little hills, like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the hard rock into a pool of water and flintstone into a flowing spring. spring. reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord, and those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Well, do you pass, why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who, washed, who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me. I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord at that, of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw, his, threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father also will do every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the holy and undivided Trinity, one God. Amen. Please be seated. Last week, Bishop Susan spoke of a three-step reconciliation process that was part of our gospel reading. First, one ought to speak directly with the person with whom there is a disagreement. If there's no reconciliation, then two or three church members should go and try again. Finally, if that doesn't work, then tell the church, which will try to reason with the offender. After those attempts, if the person is still not willing to listen, then the church should separate itself from the person as if they were Gentiles or tax collectors. As the bishop mentioned, though, Gentiles were an important part of the church, and even some of the disciples were tax collectors. Even if all else fails in the reconciliation, there is still hope. Today's reading is along the same lines, namely talking about forgiveness. Clearly, the story is hyperbolic. One talent is the equivalent of wages for one day labor working for 20 years. The parable says that the first slave owed 10,000 talents. This is a ridiculous amount of money. It's about what a, a 10,000 people working for their entire lives would earn. How did the slave even amass that amount of debt? When he begs for mercy, and he says that he will repay everything to the master, he's saying something that is clearly impossible. The second slave owed the first one 100 denarii. One denarius 
is about what a day laborer would work for one or receive for one day's labor. The repayment of this amount, which is about four months of work, is achievable, although with sacrifice. So in summary, the first slave was to be forgiven for an impossibly large amount of money that could never be repaid, yet he would not forgive a person owing him money an amount that feasibly could be repaid. This sets the stage for the master's punishment. The master withdrew his offer to forgive the debt and instead had the slave tortured until the debt was repaid. So practically speaking, forever. The punishment would last an eternity. The offer to forgive really puts into perspective when we realize that Jesus is talking about the kingdom or reign of God. The absolute greatness of God's mercy is beyond comprehension. I would wager that just about all of us have been in a situation where we cannot forgive someone who has done something wrong to us. Even if you're able to forgive a personal wrong done to you, what about someone like Hitler, who is the very incarnation of evil and who killed millions of people with no remorse? The very nature of forgiveness requires that something bad happens to us, whether it's in sin or debt or some other wrongdoing. This is the type of act where it affects both parties. The best example I can think of is the story of Joseph, whose brother sold him into slavery. Joseph was able to draw deeply from the well of forgiveness, believing his slavery was the will of God. When something bad happens to us, though, it's human nature to want revenge. Do unto others as they did unto me is a perversion of the golden rule. No wonder our society is so litigious. In the Wild West, and even in some parts of the world today, scores were settled by who had the most guns. Forgiveness, however, breaks the hold that the wound has over you. One of my favorite expressions is, don't let someone live rent-free in your head. We can replay the wrong that was done to us a million times in our head and how we'll someday pay that person back until it totally consumes us. This might make for a good plot of a movie, but not in real life. I want to put a really important caveat on what I just said. Situations such as domestic violence have further nuances that need to be addressed. I'm sad to say that the advice some of my priestly ancestors gave to women who were abused was to forgive her husband and to go back to the marriage. A blind allegiance is not what we're called to do when it places us in physical and emotional risk. A wife can forgive her abuser, but it doesn't mean that she has to go back for more abuse. Forgiving does not mean forgetting. Something such as the Holocaust should never be forgotten. The key here is that there is a role for the community in forgiveness, which brings us back to Bishop Susan's sermon from last week. Jesus' par parable was geared toward the community, not towards an individual. Today, Peter asked him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? Recall, it is the community of the slaves who told the master about the first slave who showed no mercy to the second one. It's up to the community to recognize sin, require accountability, and exercise forgiveness. In the case of the abused spouse, it's the responsibility of the community to protect that person from being abused and call to account the abuser. Forgiveness is not a one-shot deal. It's an ongoing activity of the church. The church community must always work on this. There is no limit to how many times we ought to forgive someone in the hope that the person who did us wrong will repent and reform the prospect of torture that was mentioned in the parable was not meant to frighten us into forgiving someone. 
Rather, it's meant to be a mirror in which we look at ourselves as the ones who need forgiveness. The forgiveness that God shows us is the forgiveness that we are to show others. To put it a different way, God's forgiveness engenders forgiveness. Susan Pendleton Jones, in an article in the Christian Century, wrote of Sister Helen Prejean, who wrote the book Dead Man Walking, about those men who were uh, condemned to die. She told the story of Lloyd LeBlanc, a Roman Catholic layman whose son was murdered. When he arrived in the field with the sheriff's deputies to identify his son, LeBlanc immediately knelt beside the boy's body and prayed the Lord's Prayer. When he came to the words, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, he realized the depth of commitment he was making. Whoever did this, I must forgive them, he told Sister Prejean. Though it has been difficult not to be overcome by bitterness and feelings of revenge that well up from time to time, LeBlanc said that each day, for the rest of his life, forgiveness must be prayed for, struggled with, and won. We have our work cut out for us in the church. It's not a one and done. Forgiveness is something we are called to do as a community over and over, regardless of the number of times we try it. It's a pretty good discipline for us to practice in preparation for realizing the reign of God here on earth. Amen. Please stand as you are able, and let us say together the Nicene Creed found on page 10. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are in page 11 of your bulletins. It's form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church in the, in the Anglican cycle of prayer. We pray for the Church of the Province of the Indian Ocean. In our diocese, we pray for the clergy and people of St. Paul's Cathedral, San Diego, and our diocese clergy as they gather for clergy conference. In our 
military cycle of prayer, we pray for the priority of the U.S. Air Force. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presided bishop, Susan, our bishop, and for Kirby, our priests, and all priests and all the ministers, and for all the people of this congregation who minister in Christ's name. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. For those suffering the consequences of war and violence, for those affected by racial injustice, for the many who still suffer from COVID-19, and for the opioid and fentanyl epidemics. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into glory. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, especially for those in our parish prayer list found in the back of this bulletin. We rejoice with those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Let us pray for those we know now, named silently or aloud. We pray especially for Father Michael Carr, that he may have a quick and complete recovery. We pray for those who are traveling. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, Hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I'm going to get a hug. <laughs> well, while you're here, I'll give you a hug. <laughs> Peace. Peace, everyone. This is the time in our, um, in our service where I try to explain a few things about the rich traditions that we have in the Episcopal and Anglican Church. 
And today I'm going to talk about something that's on the altar. These two things. This is called a verse with a B. And there's no coincidence that it sounds like purse with the P because it opens up and there's stuff inside. In this case, there's an extra purificator and then there's also an extra corporal. And we'll talk about those things later. But this is just about solely for the purpose when the priest or deacon makes a mistake and spills stuff all over the place. This helps us clean things up because it's generally consecrated wine that's going to be spilled. This is called a veil. Just a square piece. Now, I'm sure there's lots of ex explanations for this, but the one that I heard is that we veil this during the liturgy of the Word, which is the time when we uh, talk about the mysteries of God. We unveil it during the liturgy of the Holy Communion, because this is where the, those mysteries are uh, incorporated into us. So that is why this is uh, veiled. There's, there's no bread. Well, I take that back. There's a priest host in here, but generally all of the other bread will be brought up uh, during the offertory. So what's the name of this? Earth. And this? Hey. You, got, you are so good. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heaven and earth, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament to serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep him out of us. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep him out of us. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep him out of us. Amen. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
We offer now a special prayer for those of us who are joining us online. Lord Jesus, you give us yourself in the bread and wine of communion that becomes your body and blood. Grant that we may receive you spiritually today in our hearts, minds, and souls, and that we may have confidence in your promise to be with us always. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning and welcome to all visiting this morning and to all of you. Um, I have one quick announcement. There is a box of St. David's t-shirts on the counter in the Mission Center near where all of our food goodies are. And um, there's a donation envelope there. And we just wanted to kind of let you know that those are there and you're welcome to get a t-shirt if you'd like to. And that's it for announcements. Well, I have a Thanksgiving. I had a clean bill of health from my cardiologist on Friday. My heart has healed. Praise God. Oh. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lynn. Oh. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate today? Phil, you got up. Does that mean you, you have a birthday? All right. And Vicky as well, birthday? My son. All right. And what's your son's name? Joey. Joey. Joey and Phil. So let us pray the prayer that is on page 19. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up when they fall, and in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to your son. Thank you, Lynn, for the great news. Please stand. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit to rest upon the only begotten at his baptism in the River Jordan, pour out that Spirit who have, to you who have come to the waters of new birth. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.